Hi folks, in this video we're diving deep into Unreal Engine 5 materials. We'll be exploring how to create dynamic and visually interesting looks by adding custom parameters to control key aspects like tint, saturation, brightness, contrast and normal intensity. So watch how these parameters can drastically alter this old book's appearance. Let's imagine this scenario. You're working on a project and the art director comes to you and says, hey, we need to have more control over the look of this old book. We want to be able to easily adjust its color, contrast, and even the level of detail based on the scene or the mood we are trying to create. Now we only have three textures for this book mesh, a base color, a roughness map, and a normal map. How can we achieve this level of control without creating a ton of extra textures? So to achieve this level of control, we will create a material instance. This allows us to make adjustments to the material without affecting the original. And after that, what I'm going to do is to assign this material instance to the book by simply drag it and release it on the book. Now let's head over to the material editor. And first, we will add a constant tree vector node. This node allows us to define a specific RGB color value. Next, we will multiply this constant tree vector with our base color using a multiply node. This node, as the name suggests, multiplies the value of two inputs together. This will effectively tint the base color of our book. Finally, we will convert this constant tree vector into a parameter and rename it to tint. This allows us to easily adjust this color value within the material instance. We will set the default value of this parameter to white, I mean 1 and 1 and 1 for RGB so that it doesn't initially affect the base color. So let's switch back to our material instance and tweak the tint parameter. And as you can see, we can now easily adjust the overall color of the book by simply changing the value of this parameter. This gives us incredible flexibility and allows us to quickly explore different color variations for our book. Next, I want to add saturation control. So let's head back to our material editor and let's minimize this one. And let's connect the output of our previous multiply node to a desaturation node. This node reduces the color saturation of the material. The desaturation node has a fraction input, as you can see. So let's connect a constant one vector node to this input. This vector will control the level of desaturation. And if you hold the one key on your keyboard and click on a blank space, it will be created. Again, let's convert this constant vector into a parameter and name it as saturation. We'll set the default value to one, which results in no desaturation. Now, when we go back to the material instance and try to adjust the saturation parameter, we might notice an unexpected behavior. Decreasing the value actually increases the saturation. So to fix this, I'm going to add a one minus node after the saturation parameter. So let's head back to our material editor and search for one minus. It's right here. Let's place it here. This node inverts the value, ensuring that decreasing the saturation parameter value actually decreases the saturation of the material. And let's check it. Now it's working perfect. All right, now it is time to add control for brightness and contrast. After the desaturation node, we will add a multiply node and let's connect a constant one vector to the second input of this multiply node. And by the way, you can simply hold the M button on your keyboard and click on a blank space to add the multiply node. Now this constant one vector will act as our brightness parameter. By adjusting this value, we can increase or decrease the overall brightness of the material. Next, what I'm gonna do is to connect the output of the multiply node to a power node. The power node allows us to adjust the overall contrast of the material. We will connect another constant one vector to the fraction input of the power node and this constant one vector will control the contrast level. And finally, let's convert this constant one vector into parameter and name it as contrast. So let's head back to our editor and bring our instance. 
Now we have complete control over the look and feel of this book. By adjusting the tint, saturation, brightness, and contrast parameters, we can easily experiment with different color variations, adjust the overall brightness and contrast. And this gives us incredible flexibility and allows us to create a wide range of visually interesting looks for our book within the constraints for our existing textures. Finally, let's add control over the normal map intensity. We will connect our normal map to a flattened normal node. This node helps to reduce the overall strength of the normal map. We will connect a constant vector to the flattened input of the flattened normal node, and this constant vector will control the intensity of the normal map. However, we will add a minus node before connecting this constant vector to the flattened input. This one minus node inverts the value of the constant vector. This is because the flattened normal node expects a value between 0 and 1, where 0 represents no flattening and 1 represents maximum flattening. And by using the 1 minus node, we ensure that increasing the normal intensity parameter actually increases the strength of the normal map. And there you have it, we have successfully added custom parameters to our book material, giving us incredible control over its appearance. This technique can be applied to any material in Unreal Engine 5, allowing you to create dynamic and visually interesting looks with minimal effort. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.